Hey guys, what's up? So we're gonna do some more uh, little CD unboxing video. So um, let's see here. I'm trying to remember where I left off here. Woods. Okay. All right, hold on. Let's take this out. It'll be easier to go through and stuff. Okay, so. All right, so um, let's see here. This one is um, Bottomless Pit by Def Grips. And this is actually the first um, CD I pre-ordered, along with um, the vinyl, the bottomless pit, which I also own. This came out in 2016. This is um, one of their strongest albums, in my opinion. It's kind of like, almost like a sequel to The Money Store, which is a very, very great album, too. The uh, tray's kind of interesting, because I remember, like, some older CDs had that. They didn't have the, like, this tray was usually black. But I guess they can still do that, but... Normally, the, now they have a clear case, and you would have artwork you could see through and stuff. But it's interesting, I guess. All right, um, let's see here. It's pretty rock um, based, anyway, though. But it's it's kind of almost like a more rock based money store, almost in a way. But there are some tracks on it that are some of the crazier, craziest yet. <laughs> I'd say. No, it's one of the more successful ones. Okay. This one's Paranoid by Black Sabbath. This is their second album and also their most well known. I do prefer Master of Reality over this, but this is a really great release too. This is my second favorite by them. Um, I don't see it as their best like a lot of other people do, but but it's still a really great album though. Definitely a classic and heavy metal music. And also it's kind of like a scene as well. I mean, Master of Reality is more seen as a more influential in the doom metal genre, but there are some. Songs like this that I can see as being inspiring to some albums in the doom metal genre. But um, everyone kind of knows the song Paranoid, the song uh, um, Iron Man, I'm sure. But um, anyways, let's see here. Okay, um, now I know I like John Zorn and everything like that, but I'm only. Um, I think I only listened to this once, and that's just because. I just so basically one of um, my dad's um, family members gave this to me as a gift, and I've never heard of this John Zorn album. His his um, discography is kind of like so massive. It's um, and it also came with a little Obi, but I don't know where that went. But his discography is basically just so massive that um, it's kind of difficult to not find a album in his discography. I guess. Oh, it looks like I scratched up my bad. Okay. Um. Hold on. Yeah, that's not my fault a bit. Yeah, this is one of those cases where it's uh needs to sleep, but I scratched it up. That's okay. I'm probably not gonna listen to it a lot, but but um I don't know, but I enjoy John Zorn's music, haven't heard this, but um I listened to it once, I, I forgot how it goes and stuff though, but I don't know. It's alright, but uh, kinda of sad to scratch it up though. But and I love John Zorn's music though, and Naked City and Electric Massage are my favorite works that he was in. All right, here's an album that I don't like. Do not like this album. This album sucks. I mean, I wouldn't say it sucks, but it's not very good. This is the first album by Radiohead, one that has Creep on it, which is their most overrated song ever. But I'm not going to throw this out because I just Radiohead's my favorite band and stuff, so I don't know. I'm just going to keep it here. But yeah, but this is definitely my least favorite Radiohead album. Um, and the band themselves aren't too fond of it either. But and there's some all right songs on this, but overall and yeah, it sounds not thus yeah yeah this is the radio album i definitely do not like is their first one top of line. Yeah. okay this one is dirt by allison chains this is their most well known this is my second favorite release by them the song wood is one of my favorite songs that they did though but Looks like the CD's not in here, but this is originally belonged to my dad. He's a really big Alice in Chains fan. Now I'm listening to a whole lot of grunge, but they're the my second favorite grunge group after Nirvana, I'd probably say. Um, I prefer Jar of Flies over Dirt, but this is still a really great, great album and a classic in the grunge genre. Anyway, so yeah, it's a good album though. And it's also kind of like an alternative metal album too. There's a lot of metal elements in it as well. Alright, um, this is Ghosts. One through four by Ninth Nails, and this is an instrumental, like ambient album they did. I think it's like two two hours long, maybe a bit over that. But um, they actually did a Ghosts Five and Ghosts. Um, oh wait, no, yeah, Ghosts Five and Ghosts Six. Um, two dropped two albums at the same time this year. And I actually prefer both of those over this, but 
This is definitely one of my least favorite Nine Inch Nails albums, but it's still an all right listen. There's some, and I, I think I remember the song Old Town Road samples a song off this. I think I remember. But um, it's if you're, it's definitely if it's, I can see a lot of fans of Nine Inch Nails not really caring much for this, but it's not their worst. But it's definitely one of my least favorite in their discography. But it's still decent. It's just Nine Inch Nails doesn't really have a horrible album or anything like that. Nice girl. Okay, this one is one of my dad's CDs. This is White Zombie, and I have not listened to this one. But I'm not going to throw this out because I actually like... I prefer... I like the album that came after this called Astro Creep. And I have not listened to this. And the cover is interesting. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, obviously this is uh, Rob Zombies in this group. They're like an industrial metal band. I guess you can call them that. I can also see them call them groove metal. Something like that, but... But, um... Yeah, this is a group that Rob Zombie's in, and I probably prefer um, White Zombie over Rob Zombie's solo stuff, I'd probably say. But, yeah, this is a... I never listened to this, so, but I like the album Astro Creep a lot, though. One that came after that. I just haven't listened to that one. Alright, um... This is one of the first CDs I bought. Um, I bought this when this album kind of came out, when I was really into um, mainstream media and music. Well, this is still a decent album though. I still enjoy this album a lot. But, um, this is um, Random Access Memories by Daft Punk. This is probably my second favorite studio album that they did, I'd probably say. This one has the song Get Lucky on it. It's pretty well known. And, uh, wait, what? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I haven't listened to this in a while though, but I think the song Touch, that's probably my favorite off of this though. That song's really good. That's actually I'd probably break that along with some of the best songs, the song Touch. Really uh, so you're not going to go for this one, just never mind, again, so we already did that. So. This one is on Korn's self-titled album, and this is one of the, this is also kind of an album that I liked as a kid that I actually still enjoy quite a lot now. This is their first album, um, and this is definitely one of the greatest new metal albums ever. Easily, without a doubt, I'd probably say. And uh, it's a very dark album, though, actually, I'd say. There's um, some really um, creepy kind of vibes this kind of has. And um, this is an interesting case, because it's all, like, it's almost like it's made out of, like, a tubbleware or something. But um, the song, uh, let me see, like, the song Shoots and Ladders, I haven't heard that song until, um, I, I saw them live when, that's one of the first, con the first concert I went to is when I saw them with Slipknot, and I played that song live, and I like that song, though, a lot, but, yeah, this is definitely their best, though, um, let's see, they haven't really done a whole lot of interesting stuff lately, but their, um, the, their second latest album was actually pretty decent, album, but nice return to form, it seems like they're getting better, so that's good. Let me see if I can figure out how to put this clip with that. There, there we go. Oh, crap. The song Blind's really good. That's another one of my favorites. Also, this one Clown. That's a good one. But yeah, um, like the. But yeah, so let's see here. Okay, this one is. Um, Super Unknown by Soundgarden, either my mom or my dad or is the one that had this, but um, um, they're, they're kind of like, I don't really, as I said, I don't really listen to a whole lot of grunge, but I do like um, some stuff by Soundgarden, this is definitely my favorite album that they did. This is also kind of one of those a more like metal oriented side of grunge I probably did. Fortunately, the vocalist of this group um, um, hung himself. But not too long ago, unfortunately. But yeah, this is a decent, this is a pretty good album. Definitely one of the best in the grunge genre, I'd say. Alright, um, this is another good um, album by Daft Punk. This is their um, debut album, Homework. This one has a song Around the World. It's one of my um, favorites by them. Uh, let's see here. I think 
this is kind of when they are, um, yeah, they even have the a picture of them right there. It's interesting that everyone's like, well, I don't know what they look like. That's a picture of them right there. It's definitely, that's, uh, I guess them as kids right there, I guess. Uh, yeah, I feel like with this, they haven't gotten into the really spacey sci-fi cyberpunk kind of sound that they're usually are going. But this is still a good album, though. I prefer Discovery and um, Random Access Memory over this, though. All right, we'll do one more CD and then we'll call it quits for today. All right, um, this is my favorite Nirvana album. This one's in utero, unless you count MTV Unplugged, but this is my favorite studio album they did. Um, this is their last studio album. And um, they were kind of, when they made this, they were trying to make an album that would be a commercial failure. They were trying to make an album that would be very abrasive, not appeal very well to the mainstream audience, but it actually ended up becoming their second biggest album anyway. And, uh, but this album's awesome though, in utero. Um, they had Steve Albany of uh, Big Black produced this. He's produced a bunch of other albums, but this is a uh, heavily noise rock influence or some post-hardcore punk rock, hardcore punk influence in this too. Definitely some really, really heavy stuff in this. Like Tourette's is, is very heavy. It's almost, there's basically shrill shrieks in it and screams. It's a, yeah, this album's really good. Um, it has, Heart Shape Box on this. It's one of their best. And All Apologies is another really great song. It's probably my favorite song that they did. It's All Apologies, the last song. But yeah, this album's great, though. Um, um, def my favorite, I'd say this is my favorite grunge album of all time. I don't really consider MTV Unplugged to be a grunge album, but out of the grunge genres, this one is definitely the one that hails the highest out of them all. Um, and you wrote uh, masked, the definitive grunge album, in my opinion. So, so that's kind of about it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you so much, and bye.